Did you know that every fifth plane of this type crashed or was damaged beyond repair? De Havilland Comet, as that's what we're talking about, was the world's first jet airliner. Comet was the beginning of a new era, as it offered a relatively quiet, comfortable passenger cabin and was commercially promising at its debut in 1952. However, this plane also has its dark side. 21% of 114 comets ever built were lost in disasters or incidents. Watch to find out what happened and which other planes were equally dangerous. In 1943, the British government formed the Brabazon Committee, which was tasked with determining the United Kingdom's aviation needs after the end of the Second World War. Its member, a famous aircraft engineer, Geoffrey de Havilland, answered the call and proposed to create a plane with jet engines, which was considered a risky idea at the time, as this was a completely new propulsion technology. Work soon began and the aircraft was named Comet. The first commercial jet airliner in the world took to the skies for the first time on July 20, 1949, which was also Sir Geoffrey's 67th birthday. The plane immediately outperformed its piston competitors as flights were 50% faster. For example, flights from London to Tokyo lasted only 36 hours instead of 86 with slower aircraft. In their first year, Comets carried 30,000 passengers. The jet engines allowed the Comet to fly above the weather that competitors had to fly through. They ran smoothly, were less noisy than piston engines, and had low maintenance costs. Everything seemed perfect and airlines from many countries ordered this plane. On the 10th January 1954, Boeck Comet broke up mid-air 20 minutes after takeoff from Rome. It was already the sixth hull loss for a plane that had only been flying for two years. The plane was immediately grounded and an investigation started. However, no apparent fault in the aircraft was found and Comet resumed operations, but not for long. On the 8th of April 1954, a comet flying for South African Airways crashed near Naples in Italy. This time the comet's certificate of airworthiness was revoked and production was suspended while the fleet was permanently grounded. The investigation found that fatigue cracks had been the cause of disasters. However, contrary to popular belief, they took place around the antenna above the cockpit and were not caused by the square shape of the windows which were similar to the Boeing 737 window shape, but mounted horizontally. Despite the extensive testing, which saw a comet being repeatedly submerged underwater, and the improved construction that followed, the Comet 1 and its successors, the Comet 2 and 3, would not serve another passenger. An improved version of the Comet 4 had little success, but other manufacturers soon released their jet aircraft, sealing the Comet's fate. In 1964, the and production ended and 114 aircraft had been produced. Of all those produced, as many as 25 comets were lost, which means that the hull loss is almost 22%. The other dangerous aircraft is the Soviet Tupolev 104. Interestingly, it was the second commercial jetliner ever built after Comet. During the Comet grounding, it was the only active jet-powered airliner in the world's skies. The aircraft itself was based on the Soviet strategic bomber Tu-16, but similarities to Comet are also striking. Tu-1104 entered service for Aeroflot in 1956. The jet operated multiple flights within the Soviet Union, but also to many international destinations. Popular with Aeroflot, the Tu-104 also found favor outside the country from Czechoslovak Airlines. The Czechoslovak flag carrier became the 2104 customer in 1957 and began to operate flights to Moscow solely with the new jet. In 1960, around one-third of air passengers that traveled across the Soviet Union flew on board 2104. While the aircraft remained in service with Aeroflot throughout the 60s and 70s, its safety record was very poor. The plane was prone to stalling at low speeds forcing pilots to perform landings at speeds above those recommended by Tupolev. The first major deadly incident involving the Tu-104 occurred in 1958, just two years after the aircraft entered commercial service. During a scheduled flight between Khabarovsk and Moscow, the plane crashed, killing all 64 people on board. Shortly after, many other accidents continued to occur, which forced Tupolev to redesign the aircraft's stabilizers and reduce the aircraft's service ceiling. The fatal Tu-104 accident at Moscow 
prompted the national airline Aeroflot to retire the type in March 1979. Although the 2104 saw the end of civilian service, it still found a role in the Soviet military as a staff transport. The last straw that ultimately led to the permanent removal of the 2104 from the service was the 1981 military crash. Out of 21 aircraft produced, 37 were lost, which means that the hull loss rate stands at 18%. Of course, both planes used completely new technology and the engineers constructing them didn't have access to advanced computer design systems like today. Everything had to be calculated manually and tested inside a wind tunnel or by constructing prototypes. De Havilland Comet and 2104 were flying at significantly higher altitudes with higher speeds than their propeller predecessors. Due to this, forces acting on the aircraft fuselage were much stronger and the existing materials used to build aircraft were no longer sufficient, as were the old technologies, and thousands of people had to pay with their lives due to this. The American competitor of Comet and T-104, the Boeing 707, was more successful with around 1,000 units built and production lasting until 1978. Thanks to modern computer-based design and testing systems, modern designs are very safe compared to the early constructions. For example, the Airbus A320 family suffered from only 56 hull losses out of 150 hundred aircraft built, which means that the hull loss ratio stands at less than half percent. That's all for today. Please subscribe, like, and share the video for more.